What we do here is go back. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? <laughs> yeah, as usual, it's been a minute since uh, the last video, and we are back here again um because there's another prehistory documentary or prehistory nature doc i don't know what to call these things anymore but um there's another one out now and there's a trailer for it and we're gonna see what it's like <laughs> so i'm gonna just jump right into it and then i'll discuss um afterwards so let's see Oh, really? Oh, nice. Why are they white, though? This is the story of life on our planet. Oh, it's God. <laughs> All right, so not as bombastic as um, not as bombastic or game breaking as Prehistoric Planet, but I think Prehistoric Planet definitely um, definitely set a very high standard for these sorts of shows. So this is Netflix's foray, I guess their first official foray into um, this sort of in their world type of uh, prehistory. Uh, paleo doc, if you will, and I heard about it. I actually first heard about this a couple of years back um, as a rumor um, that you know Netflix was doing something because they heard Prehistoric Planet was being produced by Apple or it was being ordered by Apple. So um, it's interesting to see the different angles that this is going to be taking. Um, still not qu quite clear on what the premise is or how many episodes it'll have. Um, I think six to eight, that's just my guess, based on the previous sort of Our Planet series that Netflix has been making uh, for a couple of years now. And it's basically their iteration of the BBC Earth, like Planet Earth uh, series, but theirs is called Our Planet. So this is Life on Our Planet, um, which isn't the best name because all of these shows are about, <laughs> are about biology. <laughs> I would have called it, I don't know, History of Our Planet or something like that, but um, either way, uh, we'll go back through this real quick and um, note a couple things, um, you know, a couple things of interest. So we have some blue dinosaur eggs, which is a cool touch. This was in Prehistoric Planet 2 as well, the blue dinosaur eggs. Um, bluish grayish color because it's now been deduced through I forget exactly how they did it but I think it was through some sort of isotope study that um, at least some dinosaur eggs were actually uh, like a bluish turquoise type color um, and by some dinosaur eggs I mean like some oviraptorosaurs and I think some uh, some raptors too like Deinonychus specifically um, so that's cool to see, a little detail they threw in that got thrown into both shows. So, executive produced by Steven Spielberg. Did not know that. Um, I mean, I don't know anybody who's on the show, aside from the fact that Morgan Freeman is narrating. Um, I'm pretty sure the Our Planet series mostly has David Attenborough on it, but I know for some of these, when they first announced this new slate of Our Planet documentaries, 
back in, I think it was early this year, um, they revealed that some of them were going to be narrated by uh, Morgan Freeman as opposed to David Attenborough, probably because <laughs> I'm going to assume a combination of scheduling and also uh, Attenborough is like 90 plus years old. Granted, Morgan Freeman's not too much younger, but still, <laughs> he's a fitting fitting replacement. Um, but looking at these patterns, these are actually very nice um, patterns for these baby sauropods. And it looks like their heads are actually, their skulls are a little bit differently shaped than um, what I assume the adults will be, which is reflective of some cool new research that was done a couple years ago. Um, baby sauropod skulls were not, at least for Diplodocus, they were a lot narrower and pointier. Um, and their teeth, I think, were sharper or more blade-like than the adults. Um, so they were more selectively feeding on things. Um, so that's cool to see. And also, the patterning is really nice. Uh, the animation isn't as convincing, but it's passable. It is kind of weird, I'll say, that the posturing of the adult sauropod's neck is so horizontal, but I'm going to assume it's just because it's got its head low intentionally. Because you can still kind of see where it naturally curves. Sharks. <laughs> Which is something prehistoric planet. Neither season actually had any sharks in it. Um, they brought us some crocs in season two, but no sharks. So, already kind of a step up. <laughs> it's still live action sharks, but regardless. We got some Triceratops here. Another Hell Creek scene, I'm pretty sure. Or actually, well, it might be Ojo Alamo. One of the southwestern United States formations. Because there's sauropods here. Probably Alamosaurus. Um, but we know T-Rex is going to be in this, so... You can't do a prehistoric documentary without T-Rex. Um, so... This is their iteration of that. It's very clear that a lot of these are a combination of live action backgrounds as well as fully CGI um, environments. Might get a little distracting. If it was fully one or fully the other, it'd be more acceptable, I think. <laughs> but this is also just trailer footage. It might not be this way in the final product. That's a nice design for whatever the whatever this large theropod is back here it's a very nice uh, design for it uh, there's a lot of good colors going on for these like blander animals I'll say or not colors but there's a lot of nice patterns going on here um, which I like it's a different vibe from prehistoric planets patterning it's hard to put it into words exactly what I mean by that but um, some of this works really well to have its own unique look. Now this is nice. This Gorgonopsian, I'm pretty sure that's what this is, is might be the best one ever put to screen so far because various reasons. You got the hairs on it. Um, like it's still clearly a skin covered animal, but it's got little hairs. Um, it's got lips for once. You can see the giant saber teeth, but they're you can clearly see that they're not going to be protruding from the mouth, which has been a big thing with, you know, lip versus non-lip discussions in the last couple of years. But there's definitely a lot more evidence that's come out since the last time I talked about it in a video that very heavily sides in the favor of lips. And you have to really prove the case for there to not be um, a lip covering of any sort of um, tooth structure that isn't a straight up tusk. So, Gorgonopsians are probably in that category where they should almost certainly be lipped, and it's nice to see that here. Um, yeah, I mean, also, just when was the last time you saw a Gorgonopsid in any sort of media? I think it would have been, it would have been the late, whenever, whenever Walking with Monsters came out, which I think was like 2005 or 2007. I think 2005. So it's been like a good 15 years. I mean, we had Primeval for like, the early 2010s or late late 20 aughts but that was more monsterized so this is a nice 
a nice uh, refreshing look at them. I really need to learn more about synapsids, ancient synapsids in general. So hopefully this gives us a nice glimpse into that world. Hold on, I gotta look at that frame again with the mouth because they really emphasize the teeth right there. It's a very blink, you'll miss a shot. Yeah, there's definitely covering the teeth on this one. Definitely covering the teeth on this one. I like it though. We have Smilodon itself, I'm pretty sure. We saw these two in the original teaser trailer for the new Our Planet series. Um, they don't look any different from what I can tell, so. I like the patterning. Um, the mane makes it look a little weird, like a oddly hunchbacked look, but I'm assuming the heads are down. And in contrast to Gorgonopsians, um, Smilodon actually is an acceptable candidate to have completely exposed teeth. Um, there was actually a study that came out about that. I think it was last year. I want to say last year. I'll correct myself down below. But um, yeah, they looked at Smilodon and they looked at Homotherium, another saber tooth cat. And based on, I think, the tooth wear, yeah, the, the, the wear patterns on the teeth, they were, were able to conclude that Smilodon would have had exposed sabers, whereas pretty much every other saber tooth cat would have had them completely covered. So it's a nice contrast to, to see Lurgan options in the, the shot before this with the covered teeth, and then you have the extreme examples with the uncovered sabers in Smilodon. Um, makes me wonder what the theming of these episodes are going to be too, because I'm, I'm willing to bet that there's some like, I don't know, evolution of mammals specifically, and this is going to be one of those like ties between the two. Um, that's just my guess. They, you don't include Gorgonopsy and, and Smilodon in the same program uh, and not make that connection. So I'm assuming these are going to be more themed episodes rather than a proper sort of trip through time, but we'll see. T-Rex, more T-Rex mating. How many times are we going to see T-Rex courtship? I don't, I don't know. It's just a weird trope. I don't... <laughs> It's gotten a little bit annoying, actually, um, but whatever. Um, as for what I think about these T-Rex, um, I do like the prehistoric planet ones a lot more overall, but this is a perfectly fine alternate take. Um, I think something a lot of people don't understand about depictions of prehistoric animals in general is that there's plenty of valid hypotheses, plenty of equally valid ideas of how to present something. Um, and so, you know, two things can be equally accurate and look completely different. Um, whether one is more plausible than another is, you know, um, up to debate and discussion. But on the surface level of it, like this version of T-Rex versus prehistoric planets version of T-Rex, from what I can see, they're pretty much about the same to me insofar as, you know, things that are, that look right. <laughs> Like, as long as I don't completely deviate from something um, in any big way, they're both perfectly all right modern interpretations of T-Rex. Um, I do like the Prehistoric Planet one better, though. Just the coloring and the patterning. Um, I prefer it very much over this one. Um, I'm not actually a fan of these bigger scales that you see on the back of them here. Um, I do like the rougher look of these ones, though, like on the face and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't like the 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 big bumps on the on the back of them, just because. Granted, it's only we only have skin from like little patches of T Rex, but like nothing that we do have indicates that they would have those larger sort of display scales or feature scales, what they're technically called. Um, so personally, I would avoid depicting them that way unless, you know, more fossil evidence comes up. But I do like the gnarliness of the head. That's a good a good touch that I think Prehistoric Planets design, um, I wouldn't say lacked, but, you know, it, it's a very smooth looking Rex. Um, so like I said, they're two perfectly, perfectly 
equally plausible ways to depict the same animal. Um, so we'll move on. And of course we get the big asteroid strike because you have to have that if you're going to have T-Rex. <laughs> so we got these little little fishapods, or not even fishapods, these are just some sort of lungfish type creature or these early uh, Sarcopterygians, the lobe fin fish that climbed out of the water and became us. Um, I don't know which ones these are supposed to be specifically, not that I'd be able to tell you. Um, but it's nice to see them presented because I don't think it's, has it been? I don't think we've ever actually seen or been presented with this sort of thing in a prehistoric documentary like this. Like Walking with Monsters had a scene with a giant version of this, Hynerpeton, which I don't know if that's valid or not, any, or not Hynerpeton, Hyneria was its name, which I don't know if it's still valid or not, but it was a giant version of this fish. Um, like, I wanna say five to six meters long, maybe. Like, it, it clearly wasn't our ancestor type of fish. Um, it was in that same family, but it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, the one that led to us. But they kind of showed it as an aberration more so than like, I don't know, like as part of the lineage that led to us. Because that was another th weird thing about that show. They showed Cephalaspis, which is a fish that I don't think has any relation to our line or our lineage, really. They showed it transitioning into an amphibian, and they just sort of skipped the entire fishapod stage <laughs> um, and just relegated the fishapod stage to the Hyneria, which at that point, you know, wasn't even part of our tree of ancestry anymore. So I mean, it was weird that they picked the wrong fish to transition into an amphibian and didn't show like this, the great transition. <laughs> You'd think they would put more focus on that, but um, yeah, so in that case, this is, I guess, the first time we're seeing this sort of thing. So it's nice to see that. See, and then we have the ancient amphibian type creatures that are being the ones uh, doing the hunting of our ancestors. Um, it's a nicely patterned amphibian too. I don't know what it is, again, I don't know. I'm, I know this is supposed to be the Devonian, that's about all I can tell you. <laughs> so about 400 plus million years ago. Um, but yeah, it looks, it looks nice. I could look at this for a while. It looks like big, like a big salamander, a big scary salamander. And then we're in the Carboniferous with the giant Arthropleura, which has been shown in one of the previous, in the last bit of advertising material that I didn't cover. Um, so they're definitely going, to, they're definitely doing the Carboniferous, because um, you know why wouldn't you? We got the Orthocones, so yeah, we're definitely in the Ordovician, then we go to the Devonian, and then we got Dunkleosteus here. Um, I like the scarring on this one. It's nice attention to detail. The CGI still isn't all that convincing, honestly, but it it's fine. Um, like, I would watch this and be completely content with this. And I do like the attention to detail they have on the animals. Again, like the scarring that they have here. Um... Looking at the body shape, I mean, <laughs> this was clearly made before the new study that came out earlier this year uh, about the shrink in Dunkleosteus' size. Um, so this is technically already inaccurate. Um, I put quotation marks around that because there's still a decent amount of debate regarding regarding the new estimates that the paper put forward, but. I mean, I don't see any reason, granted I don't know anything about this, but I don't necessarily see much reason to doubt the validity of that hypothesis. Um, I think a lot of people seem to be mostly just thrown off by the way it was actually drawn um, in the press release art, because that does look a little funky. But I can definitely, I don't see an issue necessarily with <clears throat> with the the math behind the, the new estimation. I think when you're doing a, a scientific paper, I think it definitely pays to have a good artist <laughs> who can convincingly show 
what it is you're presenting because a lot of people are you know are just going to skip the paper and just look at the pictures that are associated with it so um it definitely helps with you know science communication to have good illustrations uh and i think the dunkley osteus paper was kind of a victim <laughs> a victim of that um no offense to whoever um did the illustration but um yeah that's my thoughts on that so angiornis or gliding from a cliff it looks like which is I don't know how I feel about this 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 scene actually cuz the thing about early bird I'm putting that in quotation marks here uh the thing about early bird flight is that we usually envision it as being a tree to tree kind of thing not so much a uh jumping off a mountain <laughs> and paragliding down a cliff face sort of deal. So, especially with these dinky ass wings it has, <laughs> like they just, they don't look strong at all. So I don't know. This is probably the thing that's I'm convinced the least by, but I'd be curious to see what the reasoning was behind this scene, if they ever do reveal it. Um, but otherwise, it's nice scenery. Um, Nice scenery. The colors of the Anchiornis are interesting too, because it's if you're if you're familiar with Anchiornis illustrations, um, you'll know that since 2010, I think we've known again quotation marks we've known the colors that it had. So it had this rufous, this like this dull reddish crest on top of its head, which you can see there, and then a, like a slate gray body, and then a black and white like checkered patterned uh, wings. But here it's a more, much more bluish color, which I'm not sure where that idea came from. Um, now the idea behind being able to determine color from a fossil um, based on melanosomes is still a bit shaky, but uh, yeah, I'd be curious to know what inspired this sort of deviation from the more solid gray or even black that you usually see Yankee Ornis depicted as. Um, so again, another to be determined, not to be determined, another to be seen sort of thing that I'm curious about. So here we have cave lions, which are all white, which is a very interesting detail because I don't know how much I agree with that actually. <laughs> Um, I'm assuming these are cave lions from in Europe somewhere. As far as I know, there's no reason to think that they would be white. Um, there are depictions of them on cave art, but they don't hint at color. Um, there's actually a lot we know about cave lions, and I don't know any of these. <laughs> but from what I do, what I do remember reading from people who are more educated than me on this topic, um. They have, I mean, smaller manes, like they'd still be furrier because it's still cold, but yeah, they have smaller manes, which is cool. Um, I like the more tiger looking ruff they have. But as for the white coloration, not sure about that one. I think that's a bit of a meme, like a paleo meme, because um, the assumption is, okay, lions in the snow make them white like a polar bear. but. I think most of their habitat during a decent part of the year wouldn't have been snow covered. So there's not much reason to think that they would be white. Um, unless maybe they're molting or something, I don't know. Some animals do that, but uh, I'm, uh, again, another thing I'm curious to see uh, people's input on that from folks who know better than me. And uh, I'm not saying the people on the show or whoever is whoever was behind the science of the show, um, you know, I'm not saying they're wrong <laughs> per se. Um, it just runs against what I am aware of right now. So every criticism I say is, you know, just my reaction with a grain of salt. Take that with, a, with you know, the caution you will, because <laughs> I'm no expert. Hey, Lystrosaurus, definitely Lystrosaurus. Um, 
I got nothing to say about it except he looks very happy. <laughs> this is definitely an improvement of whatever whatever version of this shot I saw before. It looks better. At least the sauropods postures look better. Um, nothing more I can really say about that. <laughs> and that's that. Um, yeah, like I said, not a very bombastic trailer. It shows some cool stuff, and I'm wondering how much of it is going to be in their world sort of documentary filmmaking versus um, a talking head sort of situation. And like everything we just saw here is like everything we will see. <laughs> and they just didn't show any of the scientists speaking portions. Because the last time I remember them doing that um, with a heavily CGI trailer uh, was Alien Worlds and they did the same thing where they put pretty much every single scene that they had in the trailer and because there was so little footage that they were able to produce like 80% of what you saw in the trailer was literally all the footage that they had throughout four episodes of the show so I'm hoping this isn't the case here but if it is the case here then the science segments better be a lot better than the uh, than the ones that they did for Alien Worlds. Uh, and if you want more of my thoughts on that, uh, there's a video about it that I will put right there. Um, yes, yeah, so this comes out in October. Um, I'll probably give it a review video at some point. Um, I feel like Prehistoric Planet, we all agree that that's a great show. <laughs> As much as I wanted to review the show at some point, and I will eventually get to doing something for it or talking about it in some way now that the full series is out, and I'm pretty sure there's not going to be another season of it. Um, yeah, I feel I can properly say something about it now, but, you know, it's not going to be as so much a, you know, do I recommend it or not, because obviously I recommend watching it. <laughs> uh, but this one, I think... This show, Life on Our Planet, will definitely be one that I'll probably make a proper review on. Um, just because it feels like that sort of show that we're all sort of, we're more cautious about. Um, so it might, it might merit a, is it actually good? How good is it sort of take? Um, so those are most of my thoughts on that. Uh, there's not too much else that's been released or that I know about the show from any sort of insider or hints or information. So, um, that's another thing you can look up for from me for the end of the year, in addition to the one or two other videos that I definitely will have done uh, by year's end. Um, yeah, summer has gotten away from me again as usual, but I did actually get progress done <laughs> on videos. These are just very big videos that I'm working on. Um, and you will know why when you see them. Uh, and if you haven't, um, I was on Through Time and Clades recently, and I do talk about some of the stuff that's going to be in those other videos. So if you want to get some more hints on that, um, as also, as also, as well as hearing me talk about things like more coelacanth stuff and stingray things, and um, basically my life in general as a science person. <laughs> um, I'll link the video here again, probably in the end card as well. And um, yeah, give it a watch or a listen actually. And um, that's about all I got for you for the evening. So the video will probably go up tomorrow sometime during the day. So until next time, many thanks, stay safe, and I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.